Hello and welcome back to Tutoring with Gavin. In this series of videos, I'll be showing you how to get great grades in your exam using quality quotes or speeches from the play Macbeth by William Shakespeare. I will show you how to reveal vital information about character, themes, imagery, and dramatic techniques. This video will be looking at Macbeth's soliloquy in Act 3, Scene 1, lines 48 to 72, after he talks with Banquo, testing his loyalty. To be thus is nothing. But to be safely thus, our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which will be feared. It is much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valour to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked, as it is said Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched by an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings. Rather than so come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. The opening line, to be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus, makes it very clear that even though he has achieved his ambition to become king, this is not enough. He wants to rid himself of Banquo and his children so that his own future children will become kings. Interestingly, he uses the pronoun our when he talks of his fears. This is like the royal we when the monarch talks about the crown as a collective, which could not be further from the truth. He has not included his wife in this new murder plot, and so he is solely responsible. Banquo is described by Macbeth as having a royalty of nature, repeating that this should be feared as if he is jealous that Banquo is more noble and would make a better king. This is the beginning of Macbeth's paranoia, which leads to terrible acts of cruelty. Three times Macbeth uses the verb fear in this soliloquy, echoing Lady Macbeth's previous taunts that he was afraid. He goes on to talk about Banquo's qualities, similar to the way he talked about Duncan in Act 1, Scene 7. But this time, qualities of Banquo are seen as a threat. Banquo has a dauntless temper, and a wisdom that doth guide his valour. He then talks about being intimidated by Banquo's genius. And here Shakespeare uses the illusion of Mark Antony and Julius Caesar. Caesar was apparently intimidated by his friend Mark Antony, which resulted in them going to war. Macbeth goes on to talk about the things that have been eating away at him ever since they met the witches. He complains that Banquo chired or rebuked the weird sisters for the prediction about Macbeth, but then bade them speak to him. Perhaps he suspects Banquo of having his own ambitions, and he sees this as a threat. Macbeth then uses a simile to compare Banquo to a prophet. His paranoia is really kicking in here as he talks about his fruitless crown, barren scepter, and unlineal hand. This childless imagery drives home his lack of children and seems to be a really sore point. It is as if he envies Banquo for having children. This might also explain why he is acting strangely towards Lady Macbeth, as if he blames her for their lack of offspring. The soliloquy could be divided into three sections, with his anger and bitterness gradually increasing. This last section seems like a rant about having killed Duncan for the benefit of Banquo's children. For Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered. Ironically, he now describes Duncan as gracious. He seems to blame Banquo's children for the rancors in the vessel of my peace. He is no longer at peace and probably doesn't sleep very well because he is racked with guilt. The thing that angers him most is that his eternal jewel, or his eternal spirit, has been handed over to the common enemy of man, which is the devil. He will rot in hell and he blames Banquo's children. This shows the depths of his paranoia and growing insanity. Well, I hope this has helped you to understand this important moment in the play. 
If you want notifications of other quality quotes that will help you to get a great grade, then please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Until next time.